So in this very short video, we're going to talk about the three different types of engages Tracer has. Um, the first type of engage is a very hard engage, where Tracer looks to sort of set up with ball and looks to just hard engage on the enemy. Second type of engage is we'll do hard. Second type of engage is more of a mixed engage, where the Tracer can look to go hard and then sort of stabilize poke and then go hard again and sort of cycle and play for a lot of uptime. And the third engage is sort of like a slow, more like pokey way of playing to build pulse bomb and sort of hold space and lane control, maybe peel if needed. So the first way, the hard, let's sort of look at that in this situation. So in general, ball here is looking to hit. We're playing a ball comp, a ball, sigma, brig, zen, uh, ash, tracer, mirror. And in this situation, we want the tracer to be able to go in hard. So the Tracer set up in a position where Tracer can look to engage hard, could also peel, so Tracer can blink back here and peel for the team. Tracer can rotate over here and engage with the ball if needed. Uh, so Tracer is able to do a lot in this setup position. So it's quite a strong position. It's what's in backline's LOS, so the backline can provide Tracer with packs and orb. So here, if Tracer wants to go hard, Ball can say I'm looking to slam high ground or slam the Ash, which is on high ground. Um, and Tracer will be like, OK, I'm ready. And Ball will slam. Tracer will go and hit really hard. And maybe after that, the Tracer will keep going, maybe look to pressure the back line, and then, you know, be done. Uh, and then recall and maybe get out. So hard engage is you go in with, you know, whoever you want to go in with, and then eventually you recall, and then your recall forces you out. Now, a mixed engage is where now the ball goes in, Tracer sort of set up. Tracer sort of looks to go pressure the Ash, maybe uses one blink, uh, maybe two blinks, but sort of like use one blink to close distance, another blink to sort of fight. Then after that, then, then next the Tracer will use another blink to find a nice place to stabilize and poke. So for instance, the enemy team is over here, the Tracer might look to like blink, like or trying to rotate and maybe blink and play over here and sort of play this corner and poke the enemy team. Or maybe the Tracer will come and blink over here, play over here and poke the enemy team while getting packs and harmony orb from the back line. While this poke is happening, the Tracer obviously still has recall, so it can live if needed and recall back up, or the Tracer can sort of play this corner and sort of refresh blinks. Then when the Tracer has, you know, two to three more blinks, the Tracer can then look for another hard sort of hard-ish engage where the Tracer maybe looks to try and pressure the Zen or maybe tries to, you know, go on the Ash again. And the Tracer can do this by themselves, or the Tracer can also wait for someone, a teammate, to look to make help, right? The ball can maybe, like, hit and then come back. And when the ball comes back, the Tracer then from here looks to hit with the ball. Or maybe a dynamite happens and the Tracer sees an opening with a dynamite and goes. Uh, maybe after this first engage here, Tracer comes back here, pokes, 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 farming tanks, farming the Sigma, builds pulse, then maybe uses the pulse bomb in the mid fight um, and looks to get value there. So that's sort of the mid fight, you know, example of. Uh, or mixed uh, mixed play style where Tracer sort of a looking to poke right not using recall get use a blink use two then use another blink to stabilize play a corner hopefully within their backlines LOS get some resources if not backline maybe try and play like a, a health pack so down here maybe but the problem is that LOS is not very good and you won't be able to poke for you to poke you have to sort of be in a position where you're relatively close to the enemy but still a little bit far away um, the last option is sort of like a slow, a slow poke style. So in this situation, the Tracer could play up here, but a probably better way of positioning is over here, over here, or over here. And the Tracer sort of just holds space, and you're just holding a lane, and uh, just sort of pressuring the Sigma, pressuring you know the enemy team while trying to build Pulse Bomb. The Tracer could also even like you know play to peel. You could play to play really slow and prevent the enemy Tracer and Ball from going and trying to hit your backline. Uh, while you know your tracer gets the Briggs Zen pocket and resources, their ball tracer doesn't get any resources because they're out of LOS. So that'll help you with you know the two v one obviously as well. And you don't have to win it; you just need to try and force them out. So hopefully this should give you a brief explanation on sort of hard engages, which again, you're sort of going in hard, you're going to recall uh, a mixed engage, which you're using one or two blinks, you're not recalling, you're using it to live, then playing a corner, poking, 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 building pulse bomb, or building your CDs, like your blinks again, going in hard, then coming back, live, 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 and keep that cycle going to increase uptime. Or the slow poke, you know, way where maybe, you know, you're, you're just trying to hold lane control. You're playing over here, you're poking the enemy team, you're making it hard for the tracer, the tracer can't get behind and push your team. Or maybe, you know, the tra their tracer's there and you see the ball and your tracer's sort of matching the ball, playing slow. Or, like I said, maybe their ball tracer's doing something else and you're sort of just poking the tanks here. Okay, so here we're going to talk about pathing. 
Uh, pathing is really important for Tracer as it'll help you uh, optimize your blink usage uh, so you're not wasting blinks and it'll allow you to actually be able to get on targets and close distance very effectively. So here again we're looking at sort of a ball, a ball hybrid comp mirror. Um, you can see blue team is trying to take space. Uh, they're playing low ground for now. The enemy team, red team, uh, has high ground and they're on defense. Um, red team is looking, the ball trade is playing over here looking to hit. Um, you know, blue team's ball is maybe over here for now and Tracer's over here. Now, when we sort of break up, you know, a map, you can sort of break up a map into what's called lanes. So you can see one lane here. You can sort of see another lane over here. Uh, let's correct that. I mean, it's sort of like that. You can also break it like that too. Whoops, like that. And so you sort of want to look at it. Um, and then there's one lane, obviously, like in a situation, like sort of like that. Um, so these are sort of the lanes and I'll use like red in between like this. So now I'm going to remove these. So the biggest thing you need to realize is when you understand crossfire. If a tracer were to sort of path like this, well, what's going to happen is tracer has to use blinks. If you don't use blinks, the zone's going to discord you, Ash is going to shoot you, and you know, you're just going to die, right? You'd have to blink here, blink here, and then maybe get somewhere. But the problem with this is once you're here and you, you know, you have no blinks, you're down two blinks, enemy tracer can just push you, um, and that's going to suck because you're down blinks, you'll be forced to recall, and then you got made no progress. So pathing is really important because when you're pathing and rotating, you want to be a path in a way where the enemy team can't see you. Um, and because they can't see you, they can't spam you, but they also can't predict what you're doing or know where you are so you can maybe get the drop on them. So for instance, um, because the ash is over here and the vault trace is over here, rotating like this doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, also, uh, we'll, go, we'll get there in a second, but in this situation, because of how the enemy team is set up, if you look to rotate and you look to sort of come in like this, you can path like that. You can also go all the way around and path like this. Both these are viable options, and the only time they actually notice you is legitimately right over here. And in this situation over here, that's the distance they get, or distance they get like to see you, which there's a time associated with that distance. And because the distance is so low, the time they get to react is really small. Now let's say, oops, let's say now. Um, Let's move. It up. Okay. Uh, let's say, good. Uh, let's say the ash is now like over here, and the ball tracer is over here. Um, so now you know you sort of want as a tracer. You're like, okay, well that side's taken. So now I want to go over here. Now this pathing isn't bad, right? If you especially go on the high ground, it's not bad. But the problem is, as soon as you come right over here, that ash is going to see you. So now you're going to have to use this many, like you're going to close this distance, which means you're going to have to use at least one blink one to two i'd probably say just to engage like to close distance and engage then after that then when you're actually fighting you only maybe have you know one to two blinks to actually fight with and then you have recall so really again if you saw that for earlier example where the tracer was sort of like creeping up over here you you barely have to use a blink to actually engage and that means you have two blinks for the mid fight which is really 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 good and really crucial to understand now, if the Ash is playing over there, another path, path thing you could probably do is you can maybe come under, come over here, then play here, and then it's only one blink there to engage. And that might be cleaner. Or you can maybe use, you know, there's a little corner here, come here, sort of stabilize and maybe push. Uh, or you can use two blinks and maybe hardcore push the Ash. Uh, you could come over here and maybe, I think it's one blink maybe across, maybe two, and do something like that. Um, but if you, as long as, again, just sort of utilizing environment instead of just walking from here, there's a very big difference between this distance, right? And then just being able to come here straight and then go. So there, there would be, you know, that distance with this one, that one there, which is a lot longer. So you need to sort of understand your pathing and find the shortest path, which is out of the enemy team's LOS. Now, on top of this, whenever you're sort of, uh, you know, doing this really good pathing, sort of mentioned it earlier, but you want to try and find these corners to stabilize. So if you engage on the enemy team right here, you can always, you know, you can find another way to maybe blink back here and stabilize and live. Or maybe you, you use it, you engage, you engage hard and you blink back, you come over here, you know, you get resources and maybe you come back up and you path up here and you engage again. So pathing, if you path, wherever you path and you sort of look to set up for your next engage, make sure after you have a place where you can sort of, you know, chill, whether it's a good corner that maybe there's a health pack near, Right, so you stabilize here. There's a health pack there, or maybe you're you're, you're like a blink away from your back line. So if you go here, you can blink here and like sort of go like low ground and play with your back line and get a pack or heals. 
um, or something like that so that you can keep going. Um, if you're if you're really in sync with your backline, your backline has resources, then they can just keep giving you resources. So once you engage, maybe you get a pack or harmony orb, and you can just keep pressuring, keep pressuring. Then maybe you'll go in here, stabilize, but you'll keep pressuring, keep pressuring, keep pressuring, and you'll sort of be able to keep going. And obviously, you can sort of abuse corners or something. Technically, when you retake this space with this comp, you normally want your backline over here, so your Zen gives you more LOS, and your Zen's able to like pressure them more. So Tracer will get more resources like here, and when you engage, you'd be able to back up and like play here, or you could like hit and then sort of just like play under for a little bit, then look to rotate back up, or you can push cart a little bit and poke from lower. So there's a lot of options. Um, that's pretty much it. I'd also say when you're like looking to actually hit, don't poke from here. Cause if you poke from here before you actually engage, that gives up your position and the brig is just going to look at you. So, um, make sure when you engage, you actually are engaging hard or get close, like use a lot, like, like get close enough to know the damage actually matters. Um, like here or something, break something or try and get the Zen one, then blink and then like engage. So you can do some starting damage, but don't be so far that that damage doesn't do anything. And it just gives them your presence. All right, that's pretty much it. All right, here we're going to talk about position setups. Um, in this situation, we're going to pretend we're red team, and we'll sort of look at two scenarios where blue team is uh, attacking. This one scenario will pretend that they're attacking over here. So let's say the ball tracers maybe over there or something, or maybe tracers split, balls here, and blue team is pathing this way. So there's two ways blue could obviously path. One is their backline could go here. The other one, maybe their backline could go here. And when you're playing tracer, you normally want to look to like hit and go on non-mobile targets that preferably don't have a lot of livable cds so that you can kill them easily right in this situation those would probably be uh zen or break because zen can't pack themselves um or orb themselves uh obviously they can burst zen and break and heal each other but they're both non-mobile so it's easy to kill as long as the team's with them together now because you know these are like the the you know the ways that the enemy team can path it's really important as tracer you set up in a position where you can hit any you can hit any way they rotate and you can easily adjust where based on where they go for instance you your your team says your ball says hey they're rotating right well let's say you default and you set up like right over here and you're like they're rotating right okay well then maybe you come over here and you play under and you like the really tracer over here you play under and when they actually rotate your ball slams and you come up and you hit maybe you fight their tracer a little bit could happen right or maybe you sort of hide somewhere here and you see them coming under you see the Ash, fine, maybe you fight the Ash. Maybe the Ash is over here. But you come over here, you path behind, and you hit them. So you sort of set up in a position like roughly over here um, that allow you to maybe drop and it quickly rotate based off where the enemy team goes. When you're rotating here, you, sh you can use maybe one blink if you need to, but you should try not to use any blinks. That way, when you're actually like actually about to engage and get here, you have still have three blinks or two blinks at least. One blink to engage and then two blinks for the mid fight. Again, here you could drop and you can come over here. Now, if the enemy team was playing or rotating over here now instead, they're playing here, then in this situation, maybe you would, you'd probably play this high ground, maybe like up here. And when they go, you just sort of chill and you can just shoot them at them from high ground. And when you want to drop, you can drop, use a blink, engage, and then now you've got three blinks plus you recall high ground. Or you can maybe come over here, you could again fight the ash, do whatever. If this ash is not there, the ash is over there, you come over here and you hit like with this with the ball. You hit them. And maybe again, you start here, maybe you blink over, or maybe you start over here, right? Because you know that they're going this way, so you can start over here, get a nice angle, and you can walk up like that. Both these are sort of viable ways to approach it. So sort of you should sort of sort of understand that you want to sort of understand that there's in this situation, there's two ways they rotate. Either, you know, playing around this area will give you a general idea of being able to hit here for free. Playing around here will being also be able to allow you to hit for free. And if they go this way, then you sort of, you still want to play here, but start moving and sort of be in a position where you can get on the lanes to rotate. You need to be able to dynamically position yourself, but based off where they go, but set up in a position that allows you to dynamically position based off where they go. All right, this is a really simple you know, concept. I'm not gonna go too much into this. It's just awareness. And what I mean by this is you sort of just need to have a general understanding where we'll look at red team here. Um, well, actually let, let's look at blue team. Okay, red team sort of holding like this, your reds here. So you need to have a general understanding before you actually engage where your backline is. So if you're playing tracer here and you know their backline's there or their ash is there and you wanna sort of go on them, you need to know two things. You need to know first, you know, where your back, well, okay, that's a little more than, for your team, you need to know two things. You need to know where your back line is. That's the first, that's the second thing. The other thing is you need to know where your ball is. That's for your team. 
And then the other thing for their team is you want to know where their back line is. That's where you're hitting, right? And you want to have a rough idea, rough, where their sort of ball tracer is. And the reason why is because these guys can sort of stop you from rotating. If their ball tracer is sort of matching you, then you're going to have to deal with that. If not, you know, you don't. Um, so if you know your balls, you, you look immediately, you should play here. You should look, oh, where's my ball? Oh, my ball's there. You can literally just look and sort of see the figure and know your ball set up. You can see, you can look and see where your Briggs end is and say, okay, if I engage on their back line, which is over here, my Briggs end will be able to give me resources. I'm going to get value. And you can easily do this before you engage. You can just quickly look back. If you're poking when you're, when you're reloading, you can look back when you're poking and like sort of just like moving side to side. You can quickly do a quick like 180 or a quick tight turn to the side and again, see where people are. Get doing this small little thing and keep on constantly understanding where your backline is. Oh, my backline's moving. Maybe your backline mid fight moves and they were sort of rotate. I think we can group together. Let's see. They move and they decide to come over here, right? And if, you, if you're fighting over here and you start pushing back over here because you think your backline's still here, but they're no longer there, that could be a problem, right? Because now your backline's there, which means you sort of want to play in this area or somewhere, you know, where they can see you. Um, so just make sure, obviously, your backline should be communicating stuff. But if you're playing comp, a lot of times your backline's not going to be communicating stuff. So when you're going in and engaging and if you stabilize, and you play like mixed play style, Make sure that when you're stabilizing and poking and whatnot, you're still keeping an idea of where they are. So if they're moving, you can you can also dynamically reassess your position to make sure that you're in their LOS. Um, that's pretty much it. I'd also say in terms of awareness, understand you know what resources you have. Like here you have Briggs N, which is very nice. You have a ball that can dive with you. You have an Ash that can dynamite your engages. Um, what switches are enablers to you? Uh, what threats does the enemy team have to you? Which mean, you know, Ash can not necessarily one tap you here, but it can do a lot. I think Discord one, Discord headshot one taps. Um, uh, I was gonna say they have Brig, uh, which is quite an annoying problem. They have their own tracer that can mirror you. Uh, you know, they have a ball that can pressure you, but won't really cause that much of an issue. So, you know, you have your own sort of threats here. And again, we talked earlier in the earlier session about pathing. If you understand how to path, it'll make it a lot easier for you to sort of deal with this. But obviously to path correctly, you need to have awareness to understand where people are. That's it.